What's up, nerds? Russia's Fab 3000 bomb is about to become a huge problem for Ukraine. We've already talked about how Russia is basically retrofitting old Soviet dumb bombs with the Fab 1500 and smaller types of Fab bombs. Basically, the Fab series is a series of just dumb bombs that were pretty large. They could be dropped from any kind of aircraft, and, you know, it's exactly what you think it is. You just drop it from the plane, it drops, and it explodes. There's nothing really that exciting to it. But what they've been doing, especially with some of the smaller Fabs, is attaching glide vehicles that are in incredibly cheap and easy to attach that give it not only accuracy but extended range so instead of it just dropping and using gravity it can glide basically to a target in all it's basically making a bunch of dumb bombs smart and relatively accurate with extended range at a pretty cheap price point well they're looking at doing the exact same thing with a much much larger fab 3000 bomb and as you guessed it it is twice the size as the nightmarish fab 1500 in fact the explosive weight of the Fab 3000 is roughly the same weight as the Fab 1500 bomb, like the whole thing. Basically around 1400 kilograms of explosive weight. The Fab 3000 is designed for the destruction of pretty large industrial targets as well as, you know, large command posts and other types of military targets that are uh, significant in size. And it has a blast radius, at least what's been reported that I've seen, of around 900 meters which is more than half a mile, just absolutely huge. And if you look at the pictures of this thing, it's like, I mean, not necessarily the size of a car, but uh, like the size of a motorcycle, more or less. You could basically ride this thing from a bomber, kind of like in Dr. Strangelove, uh, it's that big. Now, because of its insane weight, it does carry some drawbacks. Basically, the weight increases the cost uh, for the glide wings. It, it loses a significant bit of range and accuracy, which, again, it does make up for an explosive weight. It, it's what, Wherever it hits, it's going to destroy something. Even if it misses its target by 100 meters, it's still going to destroy the target in all likelihood just because of how absolutely massive this thing is. But it certainly can't be dropped as far away from its target as a lot of the smaller fabs because it's not it's not going to be able to glide nearly as far it's also significantly heavier and so a lot of smaller aircraft like the su-34 may not be able to carry it and so it's likely going to have to be mounted on larger aircraft like the tupolev tu-160 or the tu-95 and of course those are larger much slower more expensive aircraft for the russian air force uh, and so getting those closer to the targets, I mean, it would have to be a high payoff target um, or there would have to be a lot of confidence that it's not going to be as exposed to Ukrainian air defenses. It'll have to be used in areas either where Russia has previously suppressed Ukrainian air defenses or in areas where they know that they're just not going to be engaged. And we're going to talk about kind of where that might actually happen here in just a moment. But of course, like I said before, you know, this this is such a huge bomb that it can target larger targets like a command post or uh, you know, something much larger than that. But other than that, it's really kind of overkill. So that's why we've seen uh, so far, you know, the majority of the time, Russia resort to some of the smaller fabs. But in this case, it's really more a weapon of punishment and terror, not so much a weapon of, you know, military necessity. You can destroy command posts with smaller fabs and have enhanced range so you don't have to get the bomber as close to the command post and because command posts typically are much further back away from the front line and well within air defense you know coverage it's you know going to be more efficient for you to just drop like several several fab 500s from a much further range back outside of air defense range and have those bombs basically just glide on into the target instead of you know trying to get the bomber probably within air defense coverage drop a five fab 3000 and if it is able to drop the five the fab 3000 uh you're not only going to destroy the command post you're going to destroy basically the, the city now why are they doing this and how exactly are they expected to use this thing i mean again we've kind of talked about how it's basically overkill they have smaller systems that are a bit more capable and better suited for warfare well we have gotten some insight potentially into how russia is planning to use this and it's absolutely horrendous and that is to make ukraine's second largest city that is Kharkiv uninhabitable. The city has basically endured a long bombing campaign since the Russians failed to take the city in the beginning of the war. You might remember uh, whenever Russia was initially trying to invade Ukraine, they had surrounded the city of Kharkiv, but they failed to take it. Kharkiv is a 
uh, it's a huge city. Uh, it was home to over 1.5 million people prior to the start of the war. A lot of those people have likely since left, so its population today is probably a lot smaller. Uh, but at the same time, uh, from an infrastructure standpoint, it's a significant city because it has a large uh, rail hub in the city uh, that connects a lot of northern and eastern Ukraine. And so likely what we were going to see with the Russian war plan, should they have taken Kharkiv, was to basically connect a rail line from Belgorod, which is not too far on the Russian side of the border, to Kharkiv, and that would allow Russia to sustain its forces not only in the north of Ukraine, but also supply forces that were pushing the city of Kiev. Of course, that attempt failed, and so the forces that were attacking Kiev ran out of supplies and they had to retreat. So if the Russians aren't going to be able to take care of Kiev by force, they're just going to bomb the crap out of it and basically prevent anybody from being able to live there at all. And that, unfortunately, is where we might start seeing the Fab 3000 in action. Uh, we've seen them drop a lot of fabs on civilian areas so far, targeting not only you know residential areas but commercial areas as well. Um, and they've started different types of tactics like double tapping, where basically they where basically they bomb an area and then they wait about an hour or so before bombing that exact same area again. And basically the purpose is to let emergency services get to that area, start trying to put out fires, rescue the wounded, stuff like that. But then they get hit with the second bomb, so they're killing the emergency services. And this, over time, uh, causes attrition to the emergency services. Maybe some of the emergency uh, service you know, personnel decide that they don't want to get bombed, so they're going to evacuate as well. I mean, they're civilians as well. And so over time, the emergency services ca capabilities of the city of Kharkiv begin to degrade, and then that allows future bombings to basically become even more destructive because they're uncontrolled. You know, the, the fire begins to spread even further, uh, the wounded die in place, stuff like that. And what's even more complicated is that Kharkiv is so close to the Russian border, so it's not even necessarily that the Russian bombers have to get even into Ukraine, they can drop the Fab 3000 from over, you know, the Russian border, turn around without even entering Ukraine, and then the Fab 3000 basically just glides over the border and then hits targets in Kharkiv. Uh, Kharkiv city is around 20 kilometers from parts of the border with Russia. So it's, it's really, it is truly that close. Now, the only real option that Ukraine has here to prevent these kinds of attacks or to kind of at least slow them down is to move air defenses to the city of Kharkiv or around that area to target Russian bombers as they approach the city. And again, they're going to be targeting these bombers over Russian territory, but basically shooting around from within Ukraine. Uh, this, of course, has its own drawbacks because because of the limited availability of not only air defense systems, but air defense ammunition, uh, Ukraine would be basically having to prioritize a civilian area over valuable military targets. And so that's likely what we're seeing right now, where they're just choosing to defend the military targets, and then the civilian area just gets bombed. Now, another strategy would be to attack the air bases inside Russia. And some of the air bases for their bomber fleet are incredibly deep within Russia. And we've seen Ukraine impact those facilities and, and air bases before, and we'll likely see that again. However, none of these attacks have been significant enough to put like a significant dent in their bomber fleet. In fact, we've really, at least that I've seen, I haven't seen any significant bomber losses from these attacks. So it's likely going to take either, you know, one massive, just absolutely all out significant attack on one of these bases, or it's going to take a protracted campaign uh, targeting the bombers while they're on the ground because they're probably not going to be able to target them in the air simply due to the lack of ammunition and air defense coverage. Now, this is all part of what's called strategic bombing, which is basically just the indiscriminate bombing of a whole country. And it's nothing new. We've seen this before in warfare. Uh, World War II, very frequent, also frequent in Vietnam. And the whole theory behind it is basically to punish the, em the enemy population into submission and destroy the resolve of their people. Um, however, really, in reality, it often had the inverse effect, where it increased the resolve of the enemy populace and increased resentment of that populace towards the side that was bombing them, and it increased their uh, their willingness to continue the war. It also angered, you know, the military that was fighting, you know, the the country that was bombing them. Where basically they're they're realizing that their families are not safe; they're being bombed, so they have to fight to win the war to protect their families. Now, the Russians have been maintaining this pretty. Protracted, you know, strategic bombing campaign across Ukraine since the war began. 
uh, targeting pretty much every Ukrainian city over time. However, it appears that with the Fab 3000 and just its proximity to uh, the border with Russia, it will likely receive the worst of it. And that is why the Fab 3000 is going to be such a nightmare for Ukraine, because this is the bomb that they're going to use to just absolutely destroy the city of Kharkiv, make it make their second largest city unlivable and devastate, you know, the, the civilian population and without you know more air defenses without more ammunition and more capability for the ukrainian military to uh get back at ukrainian bombers there's just not much they can really do about it so that all sucks and that's not good comment your thoughts on this situation because it's i mean there's a lot to unpack here and leave a like if you thought this was informative or if you want to help my self-esteem. Also, subscribe to this channel for more analysis on not only the war in Ukraine, but other conflicts as they appear, uh, as well as just different kinds of international relations and defense topics. With all of that, I'll see you all next time. Later.